Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So we have some great news for women's sports, particularly martial arts, where it's quite important that women compete against other women. So last week there was a jiu-jitsu competition in California and apparently some of the female athletes were not told that they would have to compete against biological males. And it's the North American Grappling Association, NAGA or NAGA, that decides these policies for their fighters. And they have now had a revision of their policy that previously allowed biological males to compete in women's categories. And this all came about because the female athletes absolutely refused to go up against biological males. It got to the point where they began to just outright refuse because they were concerned for their safety. Some of them had competed against transgender athletes and they said that they know there was a notable difference. It's not just about not placing, you know, first, second or third, or not qualifying because you've been pushed back by a biological male. Their main concern was safety. They took one look at these dudes and they were like, hell no. So I'm gonna show you one short clip, a video that went viral of a female athlete competing against a transgender athlete. And the caption was, I weighed in at 135 and she, was over 200. Now that in itself doesn't make sense because isn't there weight categories when it comes to these, you know, combat sports like martial arts, boxing. I always thought there were weight categories. I would not want to be fighting somebody who was 200 pounds, especially in jujitsu where you could be under somebody. I mean, it doesn't even bear thinking about. So let's take a look. I don't even know what to say. Like, that's petrifying. This woman, don't get me wrong, clearly this woman is tough. You can tell, you know, she's a tough cookie. But there's a clear height and weight difference. And there's a clear height and weight advantage. One wrong move could have been catastrophic. You know, you fall on back on your head or you lean on your neck in the wrong way. Yeah, no, absolutely not. For the sake of safety alone, you know, I'm so glad that they have revised their policy, but it should never have happened in the first place. You're putting these female athletes on the chopping block as far as I'm concerned. And for what? For what? I'm going to show you later on. Even a transgender athlete is against this because this is just lunacy. The comments on Moore's post were overwhelmingly supportive, praising her for holding her own against a male twice her size. Yes, she did. She did hold her own. But that doesn't make it right. These women are obviously tough. <laughs> I wouldn't want to fight them. <laughs> but and they should never have been put in this position in the first place. Far from a she, that's a grown-ass man. Yeah, because she had the, the courtesy to, to call this person a she, by the way. Um, using his size and weight against you. Congratulations on the win. But you ladies need to stand together and not compete against men with makeup. You ladies are the key. This is not okay, said one concerned commenter. Now, yes, there are some videos of these women fighting biological males, and some of them win. <laughs> to their credit, some of them win. Riley Gaines tied with Leah Thomas in one race. But that doesn't mean that it's okay. That doesn't mean that the males, the biological males, do not have an unfair advantage. I mean, the weight alone. Shout out to all the real women competitors out there. The other dude should be ashamed of himself, replied another. Some responses congratulated Moore for managing to defeat her much larger opponent, despite his significant physical advantage. And look, 
in some sports, a physical advantage doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win. You know, if you go up to someone and just sit on them, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win. It's technique. A lot of the time, it's your skills, it's your skill set, it's your technique that can compensate for your lack of physical advantage. But again, that doesn't make it right. I believe the woman in this case, the female, was the, you know, more skilled um, fighter. So that's why she still won, because she, she had the better technique. Not that I'm an expert on this. <laughs> so the biological male in that match is James Matt Pike, who's 29. Although Matt Pike didn't beat the female athlete, Taylor Moore, Matt Pike still went on to win silver after beating a different female athlete. And this is what Taylor Moore's coach had to say. I have a student who went against a trans athlete in an open weight division. Oh, so it's an open weight division. Okay, that makes sense. But it's not open gender category though, is it? It's not a mixed category. It's for females. So an open weight division for jiu-jitsu grappling, a combat sport. I'm sure a lot of people hearing this are thinking that my student lost. No, she won. But I have a really big issue at hand. This is a very serious topic. In jiu-jitsu, we don't drug test. You can take steroids. Everyone knows this. It is what it is. When you step on these mats, you waive your right to your life. And I had to gaslight my student. Oh, okay. So the coach is saying that his student, Moore, expressed concern about going up against this person for obvious reasons. And he tried to reassure her. He basically, you know, said he was gaslighting her, basically said, oh, it's cool, it's fine, you'll be, you'll be fine. But she was, you know, rightly concerned. And yeah, she did go on to win, but again, one wrong move could be catastrophic. It's one thing, an open category for all females. A 200 pound woman is not going to have the strength of a 200 pound biological male. And the coach went on to say that Taylor Moore received backlash for simply sharing the video. Funny that. Is it because it highlights exactly what the problem is? And all she did was state fact. I'm 135 pounds. This is a 200 pound biological male. Taylor didn't even use he, him pronouns. This is my problem. When she goes online and posts about her experience, now she's a bigot and she's out in this trans athlete. Where do we draw the line? So now women can't talk about their experiences in a combat sport? Exactly. Why should she get backlash for simply stating her experience of going up against a trans athlete? This is absolutely ridiculous times we're living in now, where the female athletes are silenced, not only to speak out and give their opinion about having to go up against such people, but even just talking about their experiences. When are athletes not allowed to talk about their, their match or their game? They're interviewed after the game, immediately after the game or after the match. So when did we get to the point now where you can't even talk about <laughs> what you experienced? Everything is being taken away from these female athletes, not just medals and accolades and records and wins, but their freedom of speech. So we're going to look into the revised policy and what led up to that. So the competition last week saw multiple female athletes pull out, pull out of the competition and say, we're not going to fight these transgender athletes. We can't do it. We don't feel safe. And this basically got the attention of the sporting body and they had to revise the rules. They had no choice. So on X, Ainsley Wilk, who's a, you know, female athlete, she said, we did this. They changed their policy and transgenders are no longer allowed to compete against women. So one of the events where the women basically complained and refused to compete was an event in Georgia that happened earlier in October. So we had one transgender athlete take home four gold medals, and then we had the other one who took home the silver medal. And these competitions were overwhelmed with trans athletes, overwhelmed to the point where there were more male athletes than females in the women's categories. And Naga said that basically they show up to the competition. If they tick female, they're allowed to compete in the female competitions. This isn't a case of testing their testosterone and all this nonsense. 
that they're proposing in American cycling. Apparently, that's the only difference between male and females, testosterone. Absolutely ridiculous. But in this case, with the jiu-jitsu under the um, North American Grappling Association, there were no requirements to qualify even as, as a transgender athlete. You just tick female and you're allowed to compete against women. So a lot of them were turning up and doing just that. So a number of women came forward to express concerns about the disparities when it comes to weight and size. That was clearly evident when going up against these transgender athletes. You could see the difference between the male and the females, even though they were all in the women's category. And this scared the female athletes and rightly so. So it wasn't just the Naga tournaments, there were various tournaments that women came forward and said, we don't want to fight transgender athletes. And they pulled out. So with the female athletes pulling out, <laughs> you're getting the women's categories overrun with transgender athletes. Like I said, once the women pull out of these competitions, there is no sport. There is no match. Nobody's going to turn up to see transgender athletes fight each other unless it's a transgender you know, category of some kind. No one's going to turn up to watch a women's tournament for transgender athletes. I'm sorry. Let people who are interested in that go and watch that. So they had no choice but to revise the policy. But it should never have been a policy in the first place because safety should always come first. I am sure you have seen the posts about the trans-identified males who, who have been signing up and competing in the women's brackets at a few jiu-jitsu events over the past couple of months. Being one of the women who competed against one of them and spoke out about it, I just wanted to get on here and share my experience. I competed against a trans-identified male on jiu-jitsu 8 at a submission challenge in Marietta, Georgia, where he registered in my blue belt women's absolute division. It did not take me very long into my match for me to realize that I was not in fact, competing with a woman. <laughs> to say the experience was horrible and scary. I was absolutely in fight or flight mode, and as a seasoned competitor, I can honestly say I've never been there mentally before in a match. I've been in spots where I've been subbed, and I've never felt unsafe during a match. After my match, I literally went to the mat side while my teammates were massaging on my arms, and I just could not help but cry and look at my coach and say, that was a man. But despite winning via Renee choke in overtime, I was devastated to say the least by what I had just experienced. It really negatively affected my next match. In the upcoming months, when I went to compete again, I had to self-exclude from a World Series of Jiu-Jitsu and from a Women's Absolute Bracket at a Naga to avoid competing with not one but two trans male athletes. I kind of felt silly for not speaking up about it sooner other than like commenting and arguing on Ansley's post about it. But honestly, I just didn't know what to do at first. The fear and reservations that most women have, which is to be called a transphobic bigot who just wants to hate on people. And if you know me personally, you know that is not the case at all. The simple fact of the matter is that men signing up in a self-exclude from competitions to avoid fighting men. We deserve for there to be rules and regulations put into place that keep us safe and that protect us from these situations happening in the first place. And that is what ultimately led me to work with Icons and with Red X to speak out about this because um, it's something that needs to change and I'm really glad that I did. Work has been so uplifting it's been great and the feedback is oh my god it's literally just been wonderful and then the fact that naga not even 24 hours later changed their policy uh revised their policy um has been a breath of fresh air so that was Jaden alexander and you can see this is a young lady like what is this you know you're fighting and rolling around all on the floor with a friggin' biological male who has a bulge no young woman should be put in that position and they didn't even have the decency to warn these female athletes. They didn't even have the decency to warn them. What disregard is that for these athletes? Utter disrespect, because there's no difference between male and female apparently, you just have to tick a box. Absolutely shocking in today's society that this even happens. You send your kids off to participate in sports and they're put in this situation, they're put in this position. I can't imagine. 
But anyway, they've revised their policy. So thank goodness for that. That is some good news. So we have Ainsley Wilk, who also spoke out about this. So I'm sure you've seen the tweets or the article about trans athletes competing against women in jiu-jitsu. And as one of those females, I wanted to come on here and kind of share my experience about what happened to me in July. So I signed up for a tournament called Submission Challenge on July 8th in Marietta, Georgia. And I wasn't fully expecting to get a match because I was a purple belt at the time and there was no purple belt signed up other than me. Um, but sometimes a blue belt will step up to fight a purple belt. So at this point, I was grateful that I had a match um, until I found out later in this day that I am indeed fighting a biological male. So let's kind of get into my match and my thoughts during it was happening. So I immediately got in the clinch because I always rush in. And as soon as I clinched up, I knew something was different. They felt so strong. I was like, oh my God, this is a very strong old lady. What? So initially I am in total panic mode. I feel their strength and I'm like, oh, I can't take them down. Better pull guard. And then I, I work my sweep. I get the sweep and I feel a little more comfortable. And then eventually, you know, like maybe 30, 40 seconds later, I get the tap with the Ezekiel choke. So she's clearly the better fighter, um, Ainsley. She's clearly the better fighter. So even with the strength that the person had, Ainsley's skill and knowledge got her through the whole thing. So again, she wasn't warned. She shows up to fight. And even while she's fighting, she now has to adjust and figure out how to take down this biological male. And I get off the mat and I know I still have a second match with this person because it's a best two out of three bracket. We were the only two people in it. So we have to fight two to three times. So here we have the second match. I take a little different approach because I know now that this is a very strong individual and I don't rush in. I'm, they get their grips and I get yanked. I get yanked twice. And I'm like, this is so weird. But when they yank me, I kind of fall into a body lock. And I'm just so confused. And then they pull guard, I pass, and then I get a paper cutter choke. And then they tell the ref they didn't tap. When I originally posted this on TikTok, I received a lot of hate. And... This was never about me winning or beating a trans opponent. This was about me giving a voice to other girls like Jaden and Adela who were scared in their matches. And I can't believe people actually think this is okay. If Cordelia had beaten one of these girls that day, she would have been fighting a 16-year-old biological female support that me and Jaden have received from this has been so amazing and we just want to thank you guys so so much for protecting women's sports and especially women's grapplers and again I'm finding a little theme going on here these you know categories that a biological male is allowed to infringe upon they're also allowed to break the age barrier as well they've got grown men grappling on the floor with teenagers now that's what we're beginning to see it's very very disgusting and sinister <sighs> the story i did the other day about a 50 year old wanting to swim with 13 14 year olds and now you know not only can they get into women's categories they have access to the young young athletes young teenagers like what is this everybody who's responsible for allowing this they need to be held accountable because this is reckless, allowing grown men to be in a close contact sport with women who can be as young as 16, and so including girls, young girls. And not only that, you're putting these women in physical danger. Clearly, there's a difference between men and women. I don't care how somebody identifies. Even a trans athlete spoke out against this. Yeah, okay. so right. ah, she already choked her. 
so I've been tagged in this a few times now, and I feel like I should put my two cents in. You see this right here? This is my combat sports record currently. It's about to be seven and four, but that's besides the point. Listen, um, I've been fighting men as a transgender woman for four years now, consecutively. So, my opinion, you can take it as, as you want, but, you know, you can't keep lying to yourselves, trans women. Stop trying to compete in a category that you do not belong in. Look at me. I beat the shit out of men, and I'm still on hormones, and th there's no other excuse. And I've said this from the beginning. It's only the bad athletes who do this. The mediocre, less than mediocre, biological males who want to infringe upon women's categories. They are the only ones who do this. The good athletes, the athletes that actually win, while they were male, they've got no problem continuing to compete against males. But it's the ones who didn't achieve anything who now want to go over to the women's categories and take advantage and now be somebody in sports. So this is a hustle. We're allowing these males to use the female category to win for a change. If you're a decent athlete, I'm sorry, you've got no business even thinking about going into the female category. You can carry on participating in the categories that are in line with your biological sex. But as of now, you wanting to go over into the female categories is a huge red flag. Clearly, these women were united. None of them wanted to get hurt. They all stuck together and that's when we saw changes but when you have women who are all for this for whatever reason i've seen female athletes post things like i support trans athletes you can support them but support them in the category that they're supposed to be in don't support them being in female categories especially if you're a female athlete that doesn't make any sense you're cheering on your own downfall the downfall of your sports not just for you but for the younger women coming behind you. You're cheering on women being put at physical risk. You're cheering on biological males being in the women's locker room. So unity with female athletes is important. Not just the female athletes who are competing, but those who have retired, those who are on sporting bodies. We all need to look out for one another and make sure that these policies look out for the interests of the biological females too that these policies do not put them at risk. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.